Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, as I say, if you want to take pictures during the presentation, it's okay for me. And if I look good, tag me on Twitter because I need to change my Tinder pi uh, picture, so that's fine. Uh, and also, this is my first time speaking here in mid size. And in 2019, I think, I think it's not working there. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so 2019, I went to the first conference of outside, from Argent, outside Argentina, and this one was besides, so I'm so excited to be here today. Uh, I'm Ignacio Navarro, I'm 26, I'm from Cordoba, Argentina, it's like in the middle, a small city, small town. I work in like application security engineer, and, and sometimes I do some medical hacking when I'm a little bit bored at home. And that's the Twitter, if you have any question later or something like that, and for the picture too. And also, as a fun fact, I love sneaker and also I made clothes, so that's why I have a lot of that shit. <laughs> uh, what are we going to see today? I divided the talk in 10 different stages, so we're going to see a little bit of, of introduction, how I found this arcade in Brazil, uh, about the company who is owner of the product, of the system. Uh, some idors, work authorization, security in Android, a uh, content cover, race condition, a little bit. They have a web page if you want to book uh, some arcade for uh, parties, birthdays, and that. So, a little bit of, of that web page, some site servers, NFC, and the conclusions. Disclaimer. So, maybe some of these techniques and procedures are not completely legal. So, I recommend don't do this one at your home. And if you do this one, just take care. And if you found something, please report that stuff immediately. So just don't be an asshole and be defacing websites and that stuff. In Argentina, there was so normal, like two months ago, they were defacing websites from public universities or libraries, and why? So we can start right now. The last year, last December, I went to Hacker to Hackers in Sao Paulo. That's a really, really nice conference, so technical that but also, they have a lot of parties from Friday to Sunday. So, in one of those parties, I met a girl from Brazil, and then the next day we went, we went to get some beers. And after some beers, we see that there was an arcade place in front of the bar. And then we say, yeah, sure, we can go to play some games. We enter into the place, and there was a small machine like that one, where you can get the car, you can, ch you can check your money and that. And that was running a really old version of Windows. So I stare in front of the machine for like five minutes looking that in that way. And I say, okay, maybe when I come back to Argentina, I'm gonna, what's going on? I'm gonna check what's going on over there. So stage one, that one was the car, just the name of the, the, of the company and that, not, 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 much, not, not, ah, not much data. So I Google it and I run a little directory list with with GoBuster, uh, the normal dictionaries. And uh, we didn't get a lot of data. That was just a old version of PHP running Drupal. And we didn't have exposed the info.php. As I say, the version was from 2019. And there's an interesting research from Redmoor. That's the QR code if you want to read it. It's from 2011. And if you have the file upload zone and, and if you get some LFI, you can get some access and execute some comments in that. But in this case, we don't have the LFI, so it doesn't matter. I run a little uh, DNS search with DNSX and Subfinder, and Subfind that's the, the uh, GitHub code, the, 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 the GitHub cure. And we found the normal domains, but one subdomain ca called Plus was the web application for check your salary and your history, where did you play, charge some money and that. So I tried to do some injection into that one, but that didn't work because there was a middleware, so you cannot do anything. So you can just check the moments and charge some credit. So I spent like two weeks in that stuff and I don't found anything in that and say, okay, maybe there is no talk this year. There's no vulnerabilities here. So after two weeks, I turned, I turned the car and I see at the bottom, there was a URL from another different company. So I Googled it. And there was Argentinian one, and I say, hey, we are the worldwide, worldwide leaders of grading system for amusement, entertainments, and blah, blah, blah. Not just arcades, we have bowling, we have skate park, uh, trampoline parks, and everything. 
and that was getting nice. And they have a map with all the clients around the world, public, and there was that more than 2,000 installations in around 70 countries. So definitely I say, okay, yeah, I wanna, I wanna check what's going on over there. I run a little DNS search too, and I found the API version two documentation. Um, but you need the, if you wanna generate the authorization token, you need the API key and the API secrets. Just join that, that string, do a SHA-1, and another SHA-1, I don't know why, and then you have the access token. So if, if, if you wanna check some API that say, okay, that return at 200 status code, but on the body you can see status access, but the access is false, and the status code is 403, and access denied. But at a certain point you say, okay, we need the API key and the API secret, that didn't work. But what happened if we delete the version two? In the normal web application, that didn't work. Well, we are from Latin America, so. <laughs> <laughs> that work, and you get all the data from that amusement park, in this case, it's in Orlando, Florida, and some in Buenos Aires. So, uh, and I did another go bastard over the API, and I found some endpoint with 200 okay and some data. All of the, most of them were, were empty, and a lot of them with 400 with a lot of errors. The same as what I show you, think that's error or just uh, access denied. So now we can move to the IDOR and the broken uh, authorization. What is IDOR basically is when you try to access to the object, uh, maybe that's your object and that's okay, but maybe if you, if you wanna ask for the 201 and that's not yours and the application say, yeah, sure, here you go, that's the IDOR basically, so. We can check. <laughs> we can check our car. For example, let's say, okay, this one is my car. I have this money in that in that stuff. I have those tickets, and the image is just the same image we show you. But what, what, what happens if we want to ask for another car? So we get we get access to that one. In this case, okay, this one have ninety dollars. The th those tickets without any token or something. So just checking. And the same with the customers. And also there was a sequential ID, so you ask for the customer number one, and you get all the data, the first name, the last name, the phone, the picture, where they live, where they play the car. Uh, you have access to those cars with the pin code. There was a pin code on the car, but they didn't validate it, so I don't know why they used it. So that, that was me after I found this shit. Uh, I, I wrote a little Python script to get some cars with some money inside and some tickets just for check if that was working and there was a demo demo web page. And there was a 2000 installation with the same stuff. Yes. <laughs> I come back to the web page and I started to see and I started to read the different news about and they say okay we are in Brazil, we are in Prague, we are in Saudi Arabia, we are in Spain. We are in UK, and there's another one most interesting for you, I think. I don't know if you know that place, but there is a roller coaster close to here. Uh, I don't want to say the name or anything, so, but I think you know which one is. <laughs> um, number four, Android application. When I was checking the API, I found, I found an endpoint who say, you have different sources to get the car. One, one could be the kiosk at the store, the machine who I show you, and the other one is a CRM mobile. So I came back to the, uh, to the application store and I didn't find it because I, I was in Argentina maybe, I don't know. So I went to the normal application, la, la, normal places like APK Combo and APK Pure, or Pure, and there was a list with all the applications. So I download one of those. I decompile that one just with APK Tool or Java decompilers, and we get a code because this one was on a Fuscator or something, so that was all in plain test. Uh, I run a little beauty curve just for make it more beauty. Uh, now we can filter, so I, I run a web with the API key and the API secrets, the view key URL, the account code, and we get all those data. So we have the applicants, the, the key and the secret that for the application number for the API version two, and I get more application just to check if that was the same stuff. And yes, so. The, the API endpoint was the same, but that changed the API key and the API secret and the account code. That's mean the endpoint is the same one, but there was a header called account code, and each account code was a company. 
that was a hexadecimal like 13, uh, 13 characters, so could be qu quite complicated to guess which one is which one. Uh, so with that, with that data, we can just point to some company. But also, we have Google, and also we have the list of all the customers. So maybe we can search a little bit. But what I'm saying, basically, in this case, we send a request to the uh, to the API to the main API to the main API with a count code and let's say okay this one is an amusement park from Ecuador and if we search the name of the place the name of the amusement park and we send a request to you the same one but without a count code we have the same data so the API is the same one and we don't need the account code what about if we charge some money into that one uh, we need a token we have the API key, we have the API secret for generating the token. So we run it, we get the token, and now we can just consume the API. And that, that there was an endpoint where you can see all the different offers that they have, like, okay, you can charge $200 and then you get more 50 for free and that. And also there was an endpoint for generate the sales. Just the idea of the offer, the number of the card that you want to charge that money, and 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 that's it. Uh, uh, and also, let's say if you want to do the online recharge automatically, automatic, automat, uh, automatically, we can say that. Uh, you can just set the parameter delivered in true, and that's it. So obviously, I didn't run this one because I don't want to be in jail. And two hundred dollars at this in Argentina is a lot of money. So about the endpoints into the application, there was almost thir uh, thirty in that one. All of them in, one, in plain test, and also they have the parameters, so you can read, you can see the body or, or the query parameter in, in some cases. And there was an interesting endpoint called obey customer that you can change the name. Um, yeah, there was a post they that they have the authorization token, but they didn't validate that one. Uh, and the body was the name. The email and the newsletter, that was just a random boolean to get some spam in your mailbox. But I think the interesting one was the mail because maybe we can do some stuff if we exploit that, that thing because we don't need a token and, or anything for the user. So, I want to cover race condition. I asked for my user and I'll say, okay, this one is the demo user and that's your last name and this one is your email. Uh, but now we send a post without any token, just with the account code. And I said, okay, I, now we want to set the full test, the email, and that's it. And that works, so they don't have any validation. So I, I really record a little bit about that. But I'm so bad at editing videos, so sorry. I mean, I did my best with the application in the MacBook, so. We had account. Demo account takeover. That one is your email, full test. Now we're going to go to Webhood, get that email, send the post without any token. And let's say, okay, status success. This one is your new email. We come back to the login. We ask for the reset the password because this is, this is not our account. Send me the password. We receive the email. I usually post use a speed cam or something here, but as I say, I cannot do that. We reset the password correctly, we set just one, two, three. Uh now we wanna log it in with the other with the new with the new email. Sorry. And that's it, we have access for the same account and the user never receive an email and say, hey, your email was changed, that was you or not. So once we get into the profile, we can get, we, we can get access to all the cars and the history and all the person life, basically. So, race condition is when you wanna get some different process at the same time. Uh, you have some different cases. That, 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 that one is the QR code for the Port Swigger lab, so that, that's really nice. Uh, basically, you want to you use the same process at the same time. But 
you have different attacks could be so complicated than that. But in this case, I just write a, well, this one was the offer that say, hey, install the application in your phone and you're going to get 300 tickets. So I wrote a little Python script, just normal one. I mean, I just send in just a post and that's it. And 100 threads, nothing complicated, nothing so hard. So I run it and that's, that was uh, five hits. And we check the history and we get all the tickets into our account. And in this case, it was just ticket. But there was another one like, hey, you want to get $200 or $100 and more points. And obviously, I didn't try that one too. Uh, about the bookings, uh, I found that, that stuff on the application, say, OK, online booking, start reservation. I ran a go buster over there. And we have a lot of, a lot of folder exposed. But the most important one was the TMP, the uploads and data. The TMP have some XML logs, store data, and some about the endpoints. You, got, you get some APIs over there. You have some values, but it's not so much important in private data. I mean, it is, but not too much. The uploads, I wrote a Python script too to get some interesting files because there was a lot of pictures, just the logo and that stuff. There was not so much nice data. And I found uh, that found three different folders called Facturación Argentina. That means like invoices, Argentina. And when I entered in that one, they had two certificates. And I searched a little bit. And in Argentina, they use the staff to say, hey, I'm this company. And I pay and I receive this money from that person. So you can do some funny stuff with that, with that one. But if we have the certificates, we need the invoices over there. So in the data, there was all the invoices from Argentina with a lot of customer data, the address, the phone, how they pay, with which car and that. And there was almost 600, 700 data. And about the booking manager, one of the endpoints was called Post. And they say, search the reservation by last name or the reservation code. And you have the stuff, the input, and search. But what happens if, if you just click search without any data? You get all the reservations. <laughs> so you get all the customer, you get all the data, uh, who they are, how many person, how they pay. But I, those, one, those one are new. This one, I think this one was from US, from April, March, when I was working the talk. But also, the web page was a little bit weird. Because they have a lot of errors into the application, you can get some. You can read some code over there. You have some SQL injections too. And also, there was a fun stuff that you can tip for the waiter, but you can set a negative tip, so it's less money that you have to pay. Um, say servers. As I say at the beginning, sometimes I'm a little bit bored in my home, and maybe Sunday I open shoot and I start to find something just to have some fun. And in this case, a phone, they have the send this public, so you can create an account without any validation. I mean, you can just set random email, and that's it. And you can get some videos inside. I mean, they, they have a lot of network maps, like, OK, this one in the, the infrastructure. You can get some API secrets, some passwords, some API key. So they have a lot of videos with a lot of data. And there was a go-kart in here in US, too, who using the same stuff. And they have the administration panel public. So you can get all the users from the API, the name, where they live, the ages. Uh, that was without any token or firewall, so you can use some DDoS and that's it. Uh, and also they have public the panels. I mean, when you're on the card team, you have all the, all the monitors over there. So you can see that stuff too. It's not so funny, but you can see it. About Spain, there was a big amusement, different amusement park from the same company. And they have public this stuff. That was it's like the administration panel for each amusement park. I tried to do some SQLI and that, and that didn't work. But they had exposed the webpack. So you can read all the code from the application. And they had an API that you can check the different machines. And that gives you the status and the, AP, the public IP for that machine, the for that machine. So you can get some fun from that way too. Uh, you have all the, the rows, there was just four. But also, they have the login part. 
and they say, hey, you remember the first JSON who I show you with all the status access, status file, blah, blah, blah? That was something similar. And they say, okay, if the status code is 200, just give me the token, that's it, go away. But if, if the status code is 407, do something, but this, if it is 420, do another stuff. And I say, okay, what is 420? <laughs> At the beginning, I was thinking, I think this was talking about weed or something like that, but no. That say, 420, that give you another screen to say, okay, you can reset the password for the user that you want to use, that you want to do. So this one was a random user, and you can set the new password, and that's it. No validations, no token, anything. So it's like the same type I showed you at the beginning. About the NFC, I don't want to go in deep with this one because the card, to be honest, was so simple. But there is an interesting article from Chema Alonso from Spain who show you the different vulnerabilities in the NFC and the MyFair Classic system and that. And in my case, I just use the Flipper Zero. Um, so I read it. There was a MyFair Classic. You have some data like the manufacturer, the UID. Each block is the car have 16 block with each 16, six, 16 sector with four block each one. You have one for the key and that. But in this case, the, the car was almost empty. The key was by default just FFF. And in the second block, in the first one, you have the info about the company. But in the second one, you have that stuff. And when you decode us, that one, it's just the number of the car. So there's no validations. So you can just change your car and use the different cars that you want to use. Uh, and also, I went to Spain like one month ago, I think, to uh, Euskal Hack. That's a nice conference, too. And after the talk, one guy came to me and said, hey, I went to the amusement park with my kid last week, and I have the card here if you want to read it. And I said, sure, let's go. Uh, what's the same? Empty car, just a number over there. So basically have the same vulnerabilities that all the, all the cars are around the world. But for that, those attacks, you need a Flipper Zero or some different tool for NFC. For NFC. So I come back to the application, and I start to read the code, and I say, OK, if you, if you don't have iOS, iOS, and NFC Play is OK, do something. So I continue reading, and I say, OK, maybe this one is a little bit interesting. I open, I download the application here from US. I use my dad phone in this case. So we log it into our account. And there was a part in the application that you can get access to all your cars, and also you can emulate those cars with your phone. So you don't need a Flipper Zero or something like that to do that. Just get the application, get a phone with NFC. Uh, you have the account takeover stuff too, so you can get all the cars in your phone. And that's it. We are close to finish. I don't know what time is it, but I think we're OK. What we can do, basically, we can get access. We can get the data for all the customers. We can emulate car access to them, charge some money, uh, or earn er, er multiple, multiple times the same prices. And what about here in US? Here is one of the country with most clients that they have. But what about here in Vegas? <laughs> but first of all, just try to don't do something stupid after this one. Um, they have some stuff here. They have an amusement park and arcade in, some, in somewhere, somewhere here. <laughs> uh, they have an arcade in another place, random place, I don't know which one. Um, they have a not, there's a new place. There is a bar, bar, bar arcade or bar and arcade. That's a new one I saw on Twitter like one month ago. And it's somewhere there too. So but please, I say, don't, don't be an asshole, please. <laughs> well, at 2024, we're still having some shitty vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. So you can go to the bases and find interesting and, and get a little bit of damage in that stuff. And DevSecOps culture could help a lot to the company, because if you are fixing the vulnerabilities at the beginning, you don't need to wait until they are in the production and make all the problems that we always have. Security education and training for all the person, blah, blah, blah. The normal stuff, I mean, not, not for the security or the developers, just for the whole company. Uh, there was an update, because I presented this talk here in Visa Colombia in April. 
and at the moment they never replied to me. But after that stuff, I think they saw the talk or something, and we had a meeting over there in Colombia. Uh, I was scared of fuck over there. <laughs> Um, we had a meeting and say, okay, let's work together, it's fine, okay, I'm doing this one for free, but if you want to pay, it's okay, I, I just want to report it to you and you need to fix it, it's fine. And that was on April, in May I write the report and say that and send, I send the report to them, and they never replied to me. So, uh, I did my best at least. So. Uh, if you found something, please report it, don't be having some fun. I mean, you can report in and write a talk and present here and besides, but don't be defacing website or just made some shit stuff over there. And if someone sends you a report, please a little, pay a little bit of attention. You don't need to pay them, but say, hey, thank you for reporting this one to me. We're going to work on this one, and that's it. And that's almost all. Because tomorrow there is the other version of the talk in Sky Talks at 3 p.m., I think, yeah. 3 p.m. and there will be more data that I can show you right now with that camera pointing to me. But, <laughs> but if you want to get more sensitive data, you can go there tomorrow. Uh, for the entrance, you need a tick, you need a token that they are doing that stuff over there, and also you need to give me a beer, I think. Uh, that was on the documentation, I don't know why. <laughs> but that's all, people. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks. Uh, any questions? Cool. Uh, can you use the desk? Uh, thanks. I saw a hand. Thank you. A great presentation. Um, I missed the part where you were first exploiting the API. How did you get the API token, or how did you? No, I mean, I get a token from the Android application. Ah, uh, OK. Uh, but most of the endpoint didn't have any validation or something like that. They they don't they only validate the token in the char in the for charge money. So that's it. Uh, time for one more. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.